Have you ever really wanted to get something done? Like you are actively trying to get this thing done and you just can't and you don't know why. You feel trapped and paralyzed and overwhelmed. That's called executive dysfunction. And today we're gonna to talk about how to cope with it without totally hating yourself. Hi, my name is Megan. Welcome back to Healing Unscripted, the YouTube channel for accessible and relatable mental health content. Let's start simple. What is executive dysfunction? Executive dysfunction is when there's a misfiring in your brain that prevents you from accomplishing a task and it can prevent you at all stages of the process. So initiation, uh, follow through, execution, and of course, finishing a task. Why does it happen? Well, we don't totally know exactly. Unfortunately, the exact science of executive dysfunction hasn't been discovered yet, but there is a really apt metaphor to describe it. Imagine that your brain has a CEO that's in charge of everything. Most people's brains have a secretary, and this secretary will decide what is important enough to land on the CEO's desk. However, the problem is people who identify as neurodivergent typically don't have a secretary for their CEO. So neurodivergent basically means that your brain is neurologically different from the norm. And uh, this can look like people with ADHD, uh, people who are autistic, people who are highly sensitive, um, and a myriad of other conditions. Um, when you don't have a secretary for your CEO, everything lands on their desk, right? Absolutely everything from the feeling of your clothing to your grandma's birthday. It all is granted the same equal importance and lands on your desk. And sometimes stuff gets lost. And this can really interfere with all kinds of stuff from working memory to getting tasks done. But executive dysfunction is what we're going to focus on today. Without a brain secretary, it's really hard to prioritize, start, or finish a task. And that's called executive dysfunction. So why does executive dysfunction happen? Like I said, we don't totally understand the exact brain process yet, but we do know what can cause it or what can contribute to it. Like I said before, being neurodivergent means that your risk of experiencing executive dysfunction goes way up. But you don't have to be neurodivergent to experience executive dysfunction. Everybody can experience this, and it's typically the result of excessive stress or burnout. Unfortunately, executive dysfunction often looks like laziness, even though it's absolutely not. So if you're not sure if what you're experiencing is executive dysfunction or laziness, I highly encourage you to check out this video uh, about how the fact that laziness doesn't actually exist. But here is the difference between laziness and executive dysfunction in a nutshell. If you want to be doing the thing and you're not doing it, it's executive dysfunction. If you don't want to do the thing and you're not doing it, then I guess it could potentially be called laziness, although I would probably call that self-care. All right, next, let's tackle what does executive dysfunction feel like? What does executive dysfunction really feel like? I mean, how are you supposed to know if you're experiencing it if you don't know what it feels like? So let me tell you what my experience feels like. So it starts pretty simple. I decide that I want to do something or a thought enters my brain like, hey, you should probably do the laundry. That pile of towels is getting really big. Then immediately my brain is flooded with all of the steps that it would take to get that task done. And I start thinking of all the time it's going to take, all the energy it's going to take. And I immediately start to get overwhelmed and start to shut down. Then after the shutdown comes the shame. The shame of this is so easy. Other people do this all the time. Like, why are you struggling with this so much? Which brings up another feeling that's super common in executive dysfunction, which is comparison. So often we are comparing ourselves to what other people are capable of doing instead of comparing ourselves to ourselves and what we are capable of doing. Then I just get stuck in the shame spiral and I just feel bad about myself and then I feel bad for feeling bad and then I realize I'm supposed to be doing the thing and instead I'm sitting here feeling bad for myself so then I feel bad about that and it's uh, it's a pretty vicious cycle. <laughs> Basically, executive dysfunction is not fun and it feels really miserable. So if you're trying to get something done and you're feeling miserable about it, do not beat yourself up for being lazy because you're not. You're experiencing executive dysfunction. All right, so we've talked about what it is and what it feels like. Now let's talk about the secret to coping with executive dysfunction. <music> 
Now, executive dysfunction is a complicated issue, and there is no one magic pill that's going to fix everything. But there is something that can get you pretty close. It's compassion. And I know that's not what you want to hear. You wanted to hear about some timer or some method or some strategy that would fix this for you. But I'm telling you, the best strategy that you have when it comes to coping with executive dysfunction is some self-compassion. Have compassion for the way your brain naturally works. Have compassion for yourself as you struggle through this. Have compassion for yourself if you never knew that this had a name and you just thought that you were broken or awful. Compassion is going to get you so much further than any timer ever could. I also recognize that it's a lot easier said than done. So that leads us to the last section of this video, which is how the heck am I supposed to have compassion for myself? All right, number one, realize that your brain might work a little differently than everybody else's and that's okay. If you're realizing you might be neurodivergent, it can be tricky and complicated and weird navigating this new aspect of your identity. But once you accept that your brain really is built differently than other people's and therefore you should have different expectations for yourself, you can give yourself so much compassion. You can tell yourself, it's okay that I struggle with this. It's okay that executive dysfunction is a part of my daily life. It's okay for me to be me. Number two, reimagine what success might look like for you. So if you've thought your whole life that you're neurotypical, meaning you're not neurodivergent, you may have thought there was only one real way to be successful or one image of success in your mind. And now that you know you're neurodivergent, you might see a whole bunch bunch of different avenues for success if you allow yourself the imagination to see the possibilities. Number three, reconnect with what your needs truly are. So often we see other people's needs and we assume our needs should be the same, right? Especially when we didn't realize for a long time that we might be neurodivergent. Uh, we expect our needs to be the same as neurotypical people's because we think that we're neurotypical. And then we find out that we're neurodivergent and it's like, oh no, my needs are completely different. You've got to reconnect with what you truly need and learn to listen to yourself in order to extend yourself some compassion. And number four, restore yourself back to your natural state of being through unmasking. So masking is something a lot of neurodivergent people do in order to fit in and appear neurotypical. Unmasking is when you learn to be yourself in public ways. Sometimes this can be really small, like changing the way that your voice is inflected, but sometimes it can be big, like learning to stim in public. Stimming, by the way, is when you provide yourself with some sort of stimulation, like flapping your hands or twisting your hair. Learning to be your true self again is difficult, but it is the best way to be compassionate towards yourself. It's the best way to say, this is who I am and I am not ashamed and I refuse to hide myself anymore. You can learn to do all of this and more in my brand new coaching program, Neurodivergent Magic. Get shit done in 24 hours or less. This program is designed to help neurodivergent people deal with executive dysfunction because believe it or not, it's going to keep cropping up in your life. So we might as well find a way to work with it in a way that works with your brain instead of against it. I want to help you. I know I can help you. So sign up at the link in the description. And as always, thank you so much for watching.